figure yourself out. What's up, fellow drivers? This is your boy, David Liggins of No Rev Limits, and I'm back with another video. If you're new to this channel, I'm an Amazon seller. I've been doing this for about a year and a half. I'm doing six figures in revenue, and I'm currently documenting my journey to $100,000 in revenue a month. I have some exciting news. Some new things have been happening over the last month, month and a half, of some exciting launches, etc. my visit to China. So if there's something that you're interested in and seeing how I build and scale a brand to $100,000 in revenue a month, show me some love. Hit that like button, subscribe, follow me on my journey, and yeah, get a lot of value from the channel. All right, so today I have a lot to talk about. So first things first, of course, the background. Uh, I'm actually back home in Texas uh, visiting some family, and I decided to stay out here for the rest of the year. So um, I packed my bags from Seattle came out here to Houston where I'm from. And yeah, I'm gonna be sitting here running my business from the comfort of my home that I grew up in, which is pretty exciting. So um, again, this is one of those things that um, you, you'll be able to do once you start your journey, once you get things moving, get things along, you can figure out and uh, decide how you wanna spend your time. Um, so this is something I'm pretty excited about. It's new to me, so this is, I'm feeling a little bit anxious to, to be honest with you. It feels like I'm moving back. You know, the last time I bought a one-way ticket, uh, it was to Seattle when I got my job. So, but yeah, so here I am, um, new setting, new background. I'm in the kitchen shooting a video. Didn't matter. I didn't bring my big camera, so I'm going to be shooting everything from my iPhone, but I want to make sure to bring you guys some good content. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. So what are we going to talk about today? There's a few things here. Um, the first thing is my trip to China. Guys, I almost got scammed by a supplier. <laughs> Luckily, I mean, this is the whole point of me going, let me be, not be dramatic. This is the whole point of me actually going and taking a trip to China to vet these suppliers. Now, before you know, everybody you know, gripes and you know, complains about, hey, I'm not, I can't go to China right now. I understand that. But if you're able to go visit your suppliers, um, I absolutely recommend that you do it. One, because you get to travel and see the world if that's something that you're interested in. But two, you really get to build a relationship with your suppliers. And I'm gonna tell you in this video why I think that is so incredibly important and how that trip saved me from being scammed and spending thousands of dollars and potentially wasting money on a crappy product. Man, I am so grateful I actually went to vet these suppliers. So, let's get started. All right, so. I got there, so this this has actually happened, this trip happened over the course of like uh, about a week and a half. Uh, then I hung out in Hong Kong um, and then came back home. So I had about three suppliers that I really wanted to visit because I already decided to go with their products. Again, when I talked about in my previous video, I ended up getting samples from all these suppliers. Some of them I got about five or six, up to 10 samples for one particular product. Um, so I've already vetted most of these suppliers. Um, and so I decided on about three of them on three different products that I was going to do. So I've already decided on these suppliers, but there was one where I was like, well, maybe I can go with some, there's one product where I figured out, I uh, felt like I can go with supply, one supplier A or go with supplier B and I wasn't sure. So I decided to meet both and kind of vet them in person. Um, but let's talk about the products that, uh, and supplies that I, that I already knew that I was going to go with. So again, this is why samples are critically important, guys, because you get to vet them before, you get to see what type of work and their craftsmanship for the product that you want to launch. If you don't like something about their, their process or you don't like something about the product that they showed you and you've already gone through a couple of iterations and they're just not providing what you want, drop them. Drop them before you spend the money. The only thing that you've used is your time but you have more time to do this again without investing thousands of dollars in potential losing. So that's what I did. There were quite a few that just weren't really responding the right way. They didn't send me exactly what I wanted. They took some shortcuts. And if you're trying to impress somebody who is new to, the, uh, who knew to you as a client and you're trying to gain their business and you're already taking shortcuts, that doesn't mean yeah, just leave them. They're, they're not going to be any good for you, right? So I did that. So I ended up vetting them, getting down to about two suppliers on uh, one supplier each for two big products, um, and I decided that I wanted to go with these guys. They turned out awesome, guys. So 
I ended up going to the um, going to them to visit, uh, try to build these relationships. They took me out to lunch. They took me out to dinner. We had drinks. We talked about the product. They had all of our production samples ready. They even gave us a presentation, which was crazy. Okay, um, it's not super crazy, but I felt like I was important, and I felt like they wanted to build a relationship with me and grow the business together. And that's a key thing, guys. You want to make sure that you're trying to grow the business with them. A lot of, you know, sometimes you're not going to be able to get some of these huge, big suppliers to produce your product. Sometimes you're going to get some of the smaller and medium suppliers, but that's okay because they're more willing to make sure they make things right for you. They do right by you. And you can use this to your advantage. So as you build relationships with some of these smaller and medium companies, they want to grow their business also. So what that means is that they're gonna look for other products that could be potentially fit under your brand. Um, they could possibly vet other suppliers who um, other products. They can help bundle some stuff if you're looking for that so you can ship them to their particular factory. They can bundle these things, but they're wanting to grow their business as you grow with them. And that's incredibly important. So after that meeting, I was extremely happy. I mean, it was literally a five course. I can't, I can't, I can't really say five courses because they had this big table of food, they ordered everything under the sun, beer and wine, just, it was great. So after a few days, we decided to, um, we had all of this planned out. So I ended up going to visit my second supplier. This is for product number two. Again, this is another excellent experience. And I, right here, I'm like, man, we are on a roll right now. So um, with the second supplier on my, on my second product, um, they didn't have the my package ready to view, but they also had my products. Now, again, this was, the hospitality was great. Uh, you know, they had a banner saying, welcome to my business. Um, we came in, we had lunch, we, uh, we had, uh, you know, lunch with the boss. The boss came in his, um, to talk with us along with the, the account manager that was helping me. It was just a lot of good things happening in this particular uh, meeting and I just really enjoyed that relationship building. We got to talk about very specific things about the product, what I was thinking about potentially changing the future, how I wanted to grow. And on top of that, he got when he showed us the factory, he showed us other products they were making in-house. And guess what, guys? I had about two or three other product ideas just based off of that one visit. I wasn't even thinking about sourcing those other products, but they became potential opportunities because he manufactures them and he wants to build a relationship and something that's long lasting with my business and my company, myself. So this is amazing. So anyways, without rambling on, but these are some very great experiences. And I think that if you have the opportunity to go visit your suppliers and vet them, absolutely do it. They're gonna take you more seriously. I'm going to have priority when it's time for me to source my next products. And that is already short its face now because I'm trying to get some of my products in by the end of the year. And I'm already getting prioritized from other people they've been working with because I went to go see them. And this is incredibly important. So, so as you can see, see I got sidetracked because my dad walked in. Here he is. Say what's up. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, when you're being home and you're not in your own home, then yeah, that's gonna happen. So he's making some food. Don't mind him. He's gonna be in the background doing some crazy stuff, you know, whatever the case is. But we're gonna keep going. All right, so the next thing is happening when I, I went to go visit my third supplier just for product number three. And what was amazing about this was that I was able to really tell them, educate them about what I was trying to do with my business and what I wanted from their product. Um, and they also had an opportunity to tell me how their product was better. But what I liked about this particular supplier was that they weren't trying to sell me. They'd say, here, here's our product. And I actually bought my competitor's product so they could see. So they looked at my competitor's product um, or one of my potential competitor's product and they looked at it and they had their product out. And they said, hey, look at them both. Let's go over them and talk about the details. So they showed us a little bit more about the manufacturing process, what materials they use and why their quality was particularly better. But they just educated me and let me make an informed decision. But they weren't trying to sell me. And on top of that, she's like, you know what? If Even if you don't go with our product, that's fine. If you need future help, because she also likes building relationships, she can go out and vet other manufacturers for other products that they don't have that I might want for my business. Because one, China's about building relationships. So I ended up going with that particular supplier for this product and she's already um, prioritizing me higher than some of, my, uh, some of the other people who are ordering for her because she knows how important this business is to her and to me and she wants to uh, make you know, me happy. And so th again, this is about building relationships. And 
We got food again, we were drinking, we almost did karaoke, but we didn't do that. But we took us out to other parts of China. We just had an, a day out with the supplier, our potential supplier, which is amazing. At the end of the day, we ended up placing a, a big order. Uh, we have about 600 units of this particular product. I say big, but it's kind of a little bit more expensive. This product is about $10. Um, a piece. So we, we placed this order with that particular product, with that manufacturer, and we're just waiting for it to get in. So although I've launched two other products, this product right now is still not ready to go, but it will be delivered, not delivered, it'll be shipping out uh, this Friday by sea. With that being said, how did I almost get scammed? So I ended up going with product three from manu uh, manufacturer number three, but I was also looking at product um, three, but manufacturer number four, okay? And so with this supplier manufacturer, we went out and let me tell you, it was such a scam. I wasted a whole day speaking and trying to meet with this guy way out in some <laughs> far land in China, some city in China. It was crazy. I got there. He didn't even know where his own factory was. Come on, guys. He didn't know where his own factory was because it's new. Get out of here. Anyways, we get there and it wasn't really even a factory. It was like a prepping house. Um, and it was just bad. And I felt like I was just a little goldfish in a pool of sharks. Seriously, because they were just trying to sell me this, sell me that. Oh, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about patents that. No, this is great. And let me tell you, this was the cheapest product I've ever seen in my life. Like it was, man. And if I didn't, go vet them. I probably, you know, they maybe, I probably would have gone with them for a few hundred units. Um, it was a different, I was going for a different variation of the product number three. So this wasn't exactly the same. So I would have still gone with most likely supplier number three also. But man, let me just tell you, like, it's just a bad, bad experience. And the sample they gave me were great, but it was clear that these guys were traders and not manufacturers when their factory was just a prepping room. Anyways. I'm glad I avoided that. So, all right, enough with the bad supplier stuff. So I hope you got some value out of that. Basically guys, make sure you get your samples, make sure you vet your suppliers. Um, and if you can go visit and build relationships, absolutely go do it. All right, so let's take a look at the business. So let's go back to the beginning of the year. We're gonna do year to date here. I'm gonna do a custom date because I recorded this last week and I'm just getting to posting this. So let's go to January 1st and let's go to a couple days before Thanksgiving, which was here and apply this. There we go, almost $141,000, guys. And this is kind of crazy, you know, um, most of this year I've been selling products anywhere between $9.95 and $12.95. Um, right now you see a little bit um, higher average price because over the last couple of weeks I've been kind of jumping up some of that their price point. Um, and I had some higher price items early in the year, but most of these products are an average of $11. And to get this many sales, this type of revenue with an $11 product is, I think is pretty darn solid. Again. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what type of products I'm gonna choose in the future, but you know, going into Q4 and having a toys, I think we're setting ourselves pretty good. We had a really good week right here, guys. You can see some of those revenue numbers here. I think I hit a thousand dollars in a couple of them. There you go, like 1100, um, 101 units, or $1,100 in revenue um, going into Q4. And this is not even um, including Cyber Monday or Black Friday, which I'm gonna show you in my next video. Those numbers were outstanding. Anyways, just wanted to give you a quick update. Pretty exciting guys, like Q4 is here. I mean, we are a couple days before we hit uh, Black Friday. I've already gotten some increased sales over the last week, which is amazing. I think people are just early shoppers or a lot, a lot of people do give gifts for Thanksgiving, you know, before they hit, uh, you know, Christmas and, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't really know, but there was a serious spike over the last week as people start to pair going into some of these deals, like these early Black Friday deals, because it's like Black Friday week, et cetera, before Cyber Monday. I've seen those sales and it looks like I've done about $17,000 since the last time I showed you my numbers. Again, this is from mostly one product with two variations. Now, in these numbers, I have launched two new products. And I say launch, this has been a soft launch. So I haven't done any giveaways, which I'm not going to do, but I haven't built any, um, I haven't um, sold to any lists. Um, all I've done was ship them in, turn on PPC, um, using some of the strategies that 
I'll probably go over um, in a future video if that's something that you want. Actually, comment below if you want me to talk about PPC and kind of how I structure my campaigns, etc. If that's something that you're interested in or if you're in that point in your, your business. If you're not, we can talk about that later for those of you who are watching, depending on where you are in your business, just kind of let me know below. below. Um, but what I've done uh, is just turn on PPC from some semi-optimized campaigns um, and kind of know what words I want to target and I've been getting some sales. So the reason why this has worked for one of them is that I was able to fix a very specific issue for this particular product and people were finding value in that. And so I don't really, I don't have any reviews. I have now one review and I just turn on PPC and I'm still getting about five to six sales a day. Uh, all I need is about 10 to 12 sales a day to get on the first page. I actually, I think I can get on the first page with only five sales a day consistently, but I want to still get about six to seven sales a day just to make sure I get on the first page. Remember, these are all organic and PPC, which is awesome. Um, I did, and the other product, sorry, the other product I launched, um, is not moving as quickly. And let me tell you, the cost per click for this particular niche is very high because it's not as broad. There's not a lot of keywords for these things. So a lot of people are very competitive on these keywords. So you have to make sure that your offer is better than others and they recognize what that, that value is because you're going to be wasting money on this if you have no reviews. Now, I understand that my A cost is going to be higher without some reviews and social proof, but if I've solved a particular problem, it's what customers have complained about and what they're looking for, they're still gonna buy your product without reviews. They're gonna do it because they say, you know what, this is exactly what I want, you're solving an issue. But in one of the other products, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult to differentiate like that, other than building a better listing, having a listing better optimized and better pictures, but I'm going to have to push that one a little bit more by building and launching to a list, which I will be talking about, and I'll let you know how that goes. Now, what I have done with both of these new products is sign up for the Early Reviewers Program, ERP. And what that does is you pay $60 when you get your first review and they will solicit for reviews from customers um, for up to a year to get five reviews. Okay, once you get five reviews, the program is over. If you don't get five reviews in a year, then the program is over. Okay, but I've done that and I've hadn't had problems getting the five reviews, but sometimes it takes longer than others. But I also have an email sequence that goes out too. So this is Amazon's way of doing their incentivized reviews when they ban customers, I mean sellers like us, but they're doing it themselves, right? So anyway, this is a good way to kind of quick start to get your reviews. But again, you can't control it. You can't have a nice little email sequence. You don't know what Amazon sends them and they're gonna ask them for an honest review, of course. So you may get some reviews that are not favorable if your product is not um, a good product. But I'm confident that my product is good. I'm confident that my packaging is good. It's what the customers want. So I'm confident I'm gonna get some four and five stars coming from these reviews, which are gonna be good. Um, once I get those reviews, that's when I am going to do a hard launch. So that's when I am going to launch to a audience that I've built around this particular niche who are passionate about what I, uh, the product that I have. And that's when I'm going to, I'm only going to see my sales accelerate. So again, with this product, as I spoke about before, I'm only doing between 250, 350 units a month. So I'm only doing between you know, seven and 10 sales a day in order to get to the first page, which is just kind of low hanging fruit. So I don't have to do a huge giveaway or a huge marketing behind it, but just enough to give me those couple other sales to kind of push me to the first place. I'm already ranked organically um, on the second page for one of those ASINs for about three to four keywords that are very specific to that particular product. So I'm pretty excited about that. Anyways, guys, I'm done for today. This pretty much wraps up our session. I hope you like it. If you have questions, look, comment below. Uh, send me a message. Um, I'm here to answer the questions. I want you guys to be successful if you're on the fence. Um, and I just want to grow the channel. I want to add value, guys. So comment below what you want to see. Subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Show me some love. And happy Thanksgiving to you guys in the States. I uh, hope you have a great time with your friends and family. I'm definitely going to have a great time with my friends and family. I'm back home, so this is going to be the scene. I'm going to be shooting on my iPhone, so I hope that's okay with you guys. But I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it. hope you added value. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Later.